Hi hey everybody, it's Mike from Mike's Movies and this is a quick video just showing off my Lima Crab which arrived with me in 1986 and I think she was second hand even then. Now she was always a bit of a funny runner. Um, uh, last time I had her out was the year 2000 and there was nothing on her service history then but when I got her out recently um, the driving wheels just wouldn't turn. Um, they, was, they were stuck, the chassis seemed to have swelled up um, but anyway, what I'll do is I'll show you her running first and then we'll have a little chat about what I had to do and what I found to get it all working. It was complex and about five hours of work. The tender is a tender drive and it's a standard Lima mechanism in there, much like a class 47 bogey really. And that had my Lima service that you can find on my channel. So without further ado, let's get her running. Now perhaps Lima steam locomotives don't enjoy the same reputation as their diesels have. Um, however, I've always been a fan of Lima and uh, very grateful for them um, in the 70s and 80s because it was the only way many of us could um, end up with some modern image um, locomotives. So I've never knocked Lima, but I do acknowledge that sometimes they are slightly cheaply made. Um, now that may have been the case with this crab. Nice as she is, the details on the body are really good actually. So we have the crab now in the service cradle. So we'll just take a look at some of the bits. Now the tender is connected by this single bar and there is a spring arrangement that presses onto the two bolts. That is your connection from one side because she's got traction tyres this side which picks up on that side on the tender and this side on the loco. So that's the loco feed going through. As simple as it is, it works really well. See if we can just go in a bit closer for you. There we go. So obviously the body or the chassis of the tender drive unit is connected and under here you have a little copper contact that uh, the bolt screws through. Anyway, as I say, when I got her out recently, the wheels would not turn hardly. They were absolutely rammed shut. Now, the reason that the wheels wouldn't turn is the inner part of the chassis block here and here had swollen and was compressing on these wheels on the inside, the plastic. So I didn't really know what was going on there. So I had to find a way to open the body of the loco, which is not immediately apparent, but it's actually very simple. You remove this screw, and under the pony truck, there is a little peg, but you lever from the back here, up and back, and there's a clip 
underneath there that goes into the inside of the smoke box. That'll get your body out. Now, I don't want to do it all again because she is working nicely, so I hope you'll forgive me. I'm just going to explain what I found. And uh, if you do have a lemur crab, then you'll see exactly what I mean. Once you've got her out, you'll find that there's a block with a bit of wire on top which goes down inside. Now, what you next have to do is lever up the bottom plate, which is this piece all the way along here. Now, the best place to start is just under here with a fine screwdriver you'll see a pin that goes down that goes through the pony truck just lift there and you'll find it will start popping out all the way along once you've done that you can see the axles it's sitting in the open um, bearings that sort of that arrangement and what I noticed was that the plastic had been pushed out from the inside um, now doing a bit of online research I discovered that uh, the metal weight inside these was made from Marzac. Now, many people will be aware to their detriment of the Hornby Class 31, Super Detailed Class 31, swelling up and exploding its body and things from Marzac castings. The same thing happens to these weights. When I removed the weight, because I could see it once it was there, it was just a push-in fit, I discovered that it had sort of blistered and exploded on one side. So I drilled this right through and there was a hollow void inside. As I was drilling there was a little puff of gas as well, which must be some of the impurities in there. Once drilled, I was able to hammer it flat and uh, I also filed it down a bit as well in case it decides to expand any more. Then it fitted back in a treat, no problem at all, but the plastic had bent. So I had to use a hairdryer and squeeze the plastic in um, and don't use it mess massively hot but obviously it helps to soften the plastic and then the plastic had took up its original shape so really it was just a case of assembly or <laughs> it would have been had the wheels not fallen off their axles they're only just a push fit and over time the oil and grease and things had got into them and uh, they just slid off quartering never one of my strong points but I just did it by eye eventually and kept adjusting the two wheels it was that one and that one that had come off kept adjusting until everything was even and the crank pins were all in the same place and now it's free as you like so that really was that um, the tender as I say it is just a standard lemur diesel type motor bogey now if you check on my channel there's two guides a recent one that I did with my friend Bob and one I did many years ago on how to fully service lemur mechanisms to get them running sweet as a nut almost as good as a modern locomotive so ladies and gentlemen that is the story of my lemur crab I'm very glad that she's back running